Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little different. Um, we're doing cryptography um, and specifically we'll be doing frequency analysis to decipher monoalphabetic ciphertext. I know that sounds like a lot of um, big mumbo jumbo words, but it's actually quite simple and kind of fun. Um, so let's get right into it. So um, what is frequency analysis? So Frequency analysis is a, a tool we use to decipher codes um, in cryptography. So the basis of cryptography is to read through given a given code, which makes no sense and make sense out of it. And frequency analysis is one of um, the more uh, one of the more basic ways to decipher a text. Um, and more specifically, it is using known character frequencies to decrypt a cipher. So um, to spell that out, um, say, since we will be working with a monoalphabetic cipher, which means um, a, a cipher or a code that is made up of one alphabet and a space, that's what a monoalphabetic cipher is, uh, we'll be examining the frequencies of the letters of that alphabet. It could be, it could be any language with any elements um, within that or any letter within that language. But since we'll be working with English, we're going to be focusing on the frequencies of letters in the English alphabet. So um, we want to look at the, the frequencies of letters and spaces that are um, used the most. So the, the most used element in the monoalphabetic um, English alphabet is the space, which is used as you can see in these um, well-known texts, um, 19.75 in Alice in Wonderland, 15.7% in Hamlet, and 18.6% in Treasure Island. Um, note that this um, this chart is from Savin's book on number theory and cryptography, so you can check that out for more um, more information if you want to, if you'd rather. If you want to read more about this topic. Um, um, anyways, um, the next is E, which is the most used letter in the English alphabet. Um, as you can see, it's pretty consistent. It's around 9.9% throughout all these texts. T is around 7%. A is around 6%. And O is around 5 and 6%. So you can see that the, the frequencies of each element is pretty consistent. So we can use this information to, um, to decode um, a given set of random random letters, um, knowing that um, in English, these letters occur um, pretty consistently at the same time. So let's do an example. So this is our example. We have this uh, this long string of random letters that um, has been encrypted using a monoalphabetic cipher. So we call this a cipher text, and we will now examine. Um, let me just get a color. Um, we will now examine each um, each frequency. Not each. Well, yeah, each frequency of the letters in this code and compare it to the the chart that we had above. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the frequencies of each letter within this um, code we have here. So at first glance, I see that there are a lot of L's. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So for the letter L, we have six. And just, I'm just going to go ahead and do all of the letters in here, and um, I'll come right back. Okay, so these are all the frequencies within our given code. We have six L's, six B's, four Y's, three V's, three T's, two D's, two J's, and we have one of O, W, P, Q, K, E, N, C, and A. So we have one of each of these letters. Now let's 
um, compare these frequencies with our known frequencies. So I'm going to go up here and actually um, copy this so we can look at this while we work. Let's duplicate that and I'll drag it down here. Hello? Oh, there it is. And shrink it. Okay. There. Okay. So now we see that um, we can pair up our highest frequencies with the highest frequencies over here. So since we have um, L and B as our highest frequencies, L and B could either be space or E. So let's try L is space. So if L is space, we, can, we have to um, substitute all these L's for spaces. So this would be a space, 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 and this would be a space. So, um, does that make sense? Um, so, if we look at the end of the code, we see that there's two spaces, and then there's a single letter and a single letter. So, here and here, when we would decode it, if L is a space, there would be some letter, and then space, another letter. And that doesn't really make sense in English, because the only single letter words are like A and I, and you can't really have that. So L as space doesn't really make sense. Doesn't make sense. Makes sense. So we can ignore that and try something else. So basically frequency analysis is just kind of looking at these frequencies and making educated guesses like we just did. So next, let's try B as a space. Um, and L as an E. So if B is a space, then this is a space, this is a space, this is a space. This is a space, this is a space, this is a space. I feel like I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Okay. And then all the L's will be E's. Or I can use another color for this. Let's do pink. The L's will be E's. So this would be an E. This would be an E. This would be an E. Uh, this would be an E, and this would be an E. I feel like there's one. I'm missing one. Oh, here. So, um, right now, that doesn't look too bad. I don't see any discrepancies that could make this not work. So we can just go ahead and move on. So now we have Y, which is our second most, uh, our second highest um, frequent letter. So that could, that could be T, or it could be A and O, but let's try, um, Let's try as we go down, let's try um, Y as T. Okay, so now let's go and replace these Y's for T. So we have a Y here, we have a Y here, we have a Y here, and a Y here. Okay, so let's look at this for what we have. So we have a, a T here and then a another letter here. So this could be a, a word that makes sense. We have a T here and an E here. That that could be a word. So that makes sense. Um, then we have a word here with two T's. A five letter word with two T's if Y is T. Are there any five letter words that end with two T's that come um, to your head immediately? For me, no, not really. So I can't really think of a, a really common word that ends with two T's and is a five letter word. Right now it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really make that much sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and try something else. 
that this is a five letter word that ends with two of the same letters. So if we look at our highest frequency, since we know Y is a higher frequent, uh, more frequent letter in this code, uh, we can list them out for what we have. So it could be a five letter word that ends with two T's. It could be a five letter word that ends with two A's. It could be a five letter word that ends with two O's. I'm not convinced that it's a word that ends with two T's. There aren't any words that end with two A's. Um, there's like one word that comes to mind that ends with two O's, but like, I'm not really sure if that's, if that's like really, I don't know, taboo. It could be, but let's think of other words that end with two letters of the same. Um, let's think, how about B? Are there two, are there words that end with two B's that are five letters? No, I can't think of that. It would also help to have a a um a freq like a frequency list next to you. Okay, so I just checked a a frequency list of all the letters in the next um letters with high frequencies are I, S, and H, which all about have about like six percent. <laughs> So these all have 6%. So we can go ahead and try with these since it since it seems unlikely that Y is a T, A, or O. Um, so let's try this. Let's try I. So five letter word with two I's. Five letter word with two S's or a five letter word with two H's. So the two H's doesn't make sense. Two I's, mm, I can't think of anything that ends with two I's. Um, but S, that seems definitely um, plausible. Um, like the word, let's think grass. There's a lot of words that ends with two S's like grass, um, class, uh, Glass, it could be. This one is already looking good to me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just assume that Y is X and try that out. So let me just erase all this. So I'm just making a guess based on my, all these observations. S has the most options as a word, as a letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and try with S. So let's say, um, one second, let's say Y is S. So if Y is S, this is an S. Oops, I need my pink. This is an S. This is an S. And these two Y's are S's. Okay, so now looking, we have this word with an E, this word with an E, this two letter word with an S. So the only word or options could be is or as. I can't think of anything else, but is or as um, makes sense. This letter, this word with E, this word with ES, and this could be, let's, it could be like grass, class, glass, anything like that, and then this. So um, let's move on to V, which is our next on the list. So V is one of, it's like a higher, more frequent letter. So it could be T-A-O. Let's try so let's try V as T. If V is T, then this is a T, this is a T, this is a T, and that's it. So let's look at what we have already. So here is a T letter word. This is a T letter word. This T blank E. What does that look like? That already looks like the to me. So J could be H. 
um, and this, since we we are assuming that we, we're assuming that j is h now, so that means this j is also h. It's a lot of guessing and placing. So we have blank blank is or as the. So I'm I'm pretty convinced that j is h since the the makes the most sense here. So let's go on to the next letter in our list, which is T. Um, so we have three T's. So since we already used up this T and this E in this space, um, T could be A. And so let's replace all the T's with A's. Um, let's see, okay, yeah. We have a A here which would be a four letter word, E blank E A, that, there's no word that's like E, -eh. so I'm not convinced T is A, that is T O, mm, then we go back up here and that still doesn't make sense, so T can't be O. Um, now let's, let's look closely at, at what we have now. So we have this word here, the only we have this word that is in the form of e blank e blank. The only word that comes to mind, and these two letters are different, is mm, ever. So that would mean t is r. And if we replace all the t's with r's, does it still make sense in our code? Let me erase some of this stuff to clear up. So if we have T as R, we have this R here, and we have this R here. And then, is that it? There's another one I feel like I'm missing. Okay, so it looks like I might have accidentally erased this. This is supposed to be T also. Yeah, so now it makes sense. So this would be also an R. And this is starting to look like something that we could make sense of. Something, a word that ends with ER. This is a word. Notice that this space, this also could be another letter. This is not a space since we already defined B as our space. This um, underscore also represents another letter. So this, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six letter word. Um, something, the, something, something ever and I'm gonna say A is B and A only occurs once so I think that we're pretty safe to say that something something I'm I'm starting to see that this is something something is the best something ever since using your knowledge of English you can kind of figure that out um, so this should be an I and this should be a B meaning K is I, and D is B. So, um, since D occurs two times, we can replace that other D with a B over here. Um, K occurs once, so we're pretty set on that. Now, read, this is kind of like that one game on TV, what's it called? Wheel of Fortune. Now you have like your letters and you can kind of make an educated guess based on what's on the screen. And right now I'm seeing something, this, sorry, something burr, something the burr is the best. Let's grass, glass, class, it's starting to look like class to me. Best class ever. Um, are there any? No, E and C occurs once, so these are, that's fine. Now, what we have left is here. Something ber, the, er, is the best class ever. This has got to be a subject, and since we're in math, it's got to be a math subject. This is starting to look like number. Number what is the best class ever? Number theory is the best class ever. So I'm pretty 
convinced that this is our our code. So did we have any reoccurring things? So J occurs twice. J, as we said, is an H. And it makes sense. D is a B. And it makes sense. T is R. And it makes sense. And then, yeah, everything fits perfectly. And everything else is uh, occurs once if you go um, through the code. So now that we see our code is decrypted to number theory is the best class ever. So as you can see from the work we just did, there definitely was not a lot of math involved. It was just a lot of logic and thinking and kind of puzzle. It's just like playing a game of Sudoku. You have to, you know, do the puzzle in your head. It's, it's kind of like a game. So there's not like uh, like a way to get better at this, I guess, other than doing more of them. Um, and you'll start to see patterns and you'll start to notice. It's kind of like Scrabble too. So it's a lot like those games, like Wheel of Fortune, Scrabble. So if you're good at those games, you'll love this. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you do frequency analysis on these ciphers. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe and comment if you'd like. Um, and I'll see you next time.